Hello everyone! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can build and program a traffic light using your smartphone and the Raspberry Pi. In the end it should look like this. Now I'm going to list all the things you need. First of all you need three LEDs. A red one, a yellow one and a green one. I'm using three LEDs with a voltage of 2 volt. Then you need three resistors. I'm using three resistors with a resistance of 330 ohm. You also need four jumper wires with one female and one male end. Now build the electrical circuit according to the picture. Keep in mind that the LED has a longer and a shorter leg. The longer leg, also called anode, should be connected to the resistor. Now go to the GPIO pins. I'm using the GPIO pins 11, 13 and 15 to plug in the red, yellow and green wire. At pin 11, plug in the red wire. At pin 13, plug in the yellow wire. At pin 15, plug in the green wire. And at ground pin 39, Plug in the black wire. Now go to the breadboard. Plug in the wires like this. You also need to configure your Raspberry Pi and the pocket code app in order to establish a connection. This is also explained in tutorial 1. Ok, let's start programming. Open the Pocket Code app on your mobile device. Tap on the button Explore. Search for RPI-Tutorial3 and download the program. Open the program. We have four different objects. The background of traffic light, the red light, the yellow light and the green light. Let's start with the red light. Tap on the object. Then tap on the button looks. As you can see the object has two different looks uh, on and off. Now go back and tap on the button scripts. Here we will write our code. You can add new code bricks with the plus symbol. Tap on the play button. The lights are already on my position. This is because of these two code bricks uh, where we set the size uh, and the position of each object. I'm using a variable with the name state and the uh, initial value of this variable is zero. The traffic light has four different states, uh, namely zero, one, two and three. And at the beginning the traffic light is in state zero and then changes to state one. To change the state of the traffic light, we broadcast a message with the name next state. In state 0 and 1, the red light is turned on. Remember that we now write the code for the red light. Whenever the object receives the message next state, we have to check the value of the variable state. Again, the red light, or respectively the red LED, is only turned on when the traffic light is in state 0 or state 1. We use two if statements. If the value of the variable state is 0, the look of the object is set to on. We also need to turn on the red LED, so we set the GPIO open 11 to 1. State 0 lasts 3 seconds. Then we change to the next state. So we need to set the variable state to 1 and broadcast the message next state. Now to the second if statement. If the value of the variable state is 1, the look of the object red light is set to on. And again, we also need to turn on the red LED, so we set the GPIO pin 11 to 1. And state 1 lasts 2 seconds. Uh, if the value of the variable state is neither uh, 0 nor 1, we set the look of the object red light to off. 
and we also need to set the TPO pin 11 to 0. Here you can see the complete code for the object red light. Now go back to the following screen. I'm going to write the code for the yellow light or the yellow LED now. Tap on the object yellow light. Tap on the button looks. Like the red light, also the yellow light has two different looks, on and off. Go back and tap on the button scripts. Here we will write our code for the yellow light. The yellow light is turned on in state 1 and state 3. Whenever the object receives the message next state, we need to check whether the traffic light is in state 1 or state 3. Therefore, I'm using two if statements. If the value of the variable state is 1, the look of the object is set to on. We also need to turn on the yellow LED, so we set the GPO pin 13 to 1. And state 1 lasts 2 seconds. Then we change to the next state. We need to set the variable state to 2 and broadcast the message next state. If the value of the variable state is 3, the look of the object is set to on. We also need to turn on the yellow LED, so we set the GPO pin 13 to 1. Uh, state 3 lasts 2 seconds. Then we change to the next state. The next state of the traffic light is the initial state, state 0. So we need to set the variable state to 0 and broadcast the message next state. If the value of the variable state is neither 1 nor 3, we set the look of the object yellow light to off and we also need to set the GPO pin 13 to 0. Here you see the complete code for the object yellow light. Now go back to the following screen. Finally, I'm going to write the code for the green light or the green LED. Tap on the object green light. Tap on the button looks. Like the red and the yellow light, also the green light has two different looks, on and off. Now go back and tap on the button scripts. Here we will write our code for the green light. The green light is only turned on in state 2. Whenever the object receives the message next state, we need to check whether the traffic light is in state 2. Therefore, I'm using one if statement. If the value of the variable state is 2, the look of the object is set to on. We also need to turn on the green LED, so we set the GPO pin 15 to 1. After 5 seconds, the continuous green light changes to a blinking green light. First to the LED. I broadcast the message blinking LED. I swap this code into the background. So go back to the start screen, tap on Hintergrund, then tap on Scripts. Here we write the code for the blinking LED. LED is turned on and off four times. Now go back to the script of the green light. The green light should be turned on and off four times, so we need to change the look of the green light eight times. Without the wait command, the switch between on and off is not recognizable. After the blinking, we change to the next state. So we need to set the variable state to 3 and broadcast the message next state. If the value of the variable state is not 2, we set the look of the object green light to off and we also need to set the GPIO pin 15 to 0. Tap on the play button to start the program. It might take a few seconds to establish the connection between the Raspberry Pi and the Bucket Code app. So if it doesn't work um, the first time, uh, tap on the play button again. I hope that it also works for you. This was the last tutorial of Raspberry Pi meets Bucket Code. Thank you for watching this tutorial.